Hi, my name is Hannah McCormick and my partner is Marina Gephardt. The topic we're going to discuss with you today is women in front of the camera and TV news and the criticism they face mainly regarding their appearance and everything else, but mainly their appearance. When I started research on this blog post, I noticed that a simple Google search for female news anchors and women news anchors, for those of you who think I'm sexist for saying female, had an interesting array of autofill results. As you can see, the third autofill result down says female news reporter wardrobe malfunction, and the fourth result down says female news bloopers. That kind of says to me, and the, or at least to anyone that uses Google, that women in news generally aren't taken very seriously. Maybe the failure to take journalists seriously is why women only represent about 40% of the workforce across television news stations in the country. A number that has remained relatively unchanged since the mid-1990s. So that means if women are only 40% of the workforce, the rest is men. 60%. That's a lot. Something else that has remained unchanged for decades is that the public has a general field day in verbally tearing apart the appearance of various women newscasters. Three years ago, an anchor woman who was fed up with everything responded to viewer criticism of her weight live on air. I want to take a moment to address a situation that has become a talking point in this community over the past week and especially on Facebook that centers around me. On Friday, I received the following email from a lacrosse man with the subject line, Community Responsibility, and it reads as follows. Hi, Jennifer. It's unusual that I see your morning show, but I did so for a very short time today. I was surprised indeed to witness that your physical condition hasn't improved for many years. Surely you don't consider yourself a suitable example for this community's young people, girls in particular. Obesity is one of the worst choices a person can make and one of the most dangerous habits to maintain. I leave you this note hoping that you'll reconsider your responsibility as a local public personality to present and promote a healthy lifestyle. Now, those of us in the media, we get a healthy dose of critiques from our viewers throughout the year, and we realize that it comes with having a job in the public eye. But this email was more than that. While I tried my best to laugh off the very hurtful attack on my appearance, my colleagues could not do the same, especially my husband, our 6 and 10 anchor, Mike Thompson. Mike posted this email on his WKBT Facebook page, and what happened next has been truly inspiring. Hundreds and hundreds of people have taken the time out of their day to not only lift my spirits, but take a stand that attacks like this are not okay. Now we're going to have more on that in just a second, but first, the truth is, I am overweight. You could call me fat, and yes, even obese on a doctor's chart. But to the person who wrote me that letter, do you think I don't know that? That your cruel words are pointing out something that I don't see? You don't know me. You are not a friend of mine. You are not a part of my family, and you have admitted that you don't watch this show. So you know nothing about me but what you see on the outside. And I am much more than a number on a scale. And here is where I want all of us to learn something from this. If you didn't already know, October is National Anti-Bullying Month. And this is a problem that is growing every day in our schools and on the internet. It is a major issue in the lives of young people today. And as the mother of three young girls, it scares me to death. Now, I am a grown woman, and luckily for me, I have a very thick skin, literally, as that email pointed out, and otherwise. And that man's words mean nothing to me. But what really angers me about this is there are children who don't know better, who get emails as critical as the one I received, or in many cases, even worse, each and every day. The internet has become a weapon our schools have become a battleground, and this behavior is learned. It is passed down from people like the man who wrote me that email. If you are at home and you are talking about the fat news lady, guess what? Your children are probably going to go to school and call someone fat. We need to teach our kids how to be kind, not critical, and we need to do that by example. So many of you have come to my defense over the past four days. I am literally overwhelmed by your words. 
to my colleagues and my friends from today and from years ago, my family, my amazing husband, and so many of you out there that I will probably never have the opportunity to meet, I will never be able to thank you enough for your words of support and for taking a stand against this bully. We are better than that email. We are better than the bullies that would try to take us down. And I leave you with this. To all of the children out there who feel lost, who are struggling with your weight, with the color of your skin, your sexual preference, your disability, even the acne on your face, listen to me right now. Do not let your self-worth be defined by bullies. Learn from my experience that the cruel words of one are nothing compared to the shouts of many. We'll be right back. I'm glad she ever so tactfully added the part about how hate speech like his sets an example for children, that it is okay to ridicule another solely on their appearance, and that simply isn't right. I remember seeing on TV a while back that women reporters are highly likely to get creepy stalkers. At least that's what the former reporter claimed on the talk show I was watching. She also claimed they get a lot of helpful hints from uh, viewers' unsolicited advice regarding their appearance and what they should wear, how they should wear their hairstyle. And according to the textbook, um, women in TV dues actually don't receive a lot in pay when they're starting out and often have to work long and odd hours. So viewers shouldn't criticize their appearance. How would you like to be criticized uh, working the graveyard shift anywhere? I mean, you probably don't look so hot and you wouldn't appreciate people talking to you about it, talking behind your back about it, but what if people were posting hateful things about you on Facebook and other outlets on the internet? That just isn't right, and no one would like that, so maybe we should take a step back and think about what we're saying to other people who, maybe they're strangers to you, but they're not strangers. They have a family, they have a life, they have feelings, they don't deserve your hate. To emphasize the judgment that female newscasters receive regarding their looks, one anchorman decided to make a statement by wearing the same suit every day for an entire year after hearing nothing but criticism about his co-worker's appearance, including her hairstyle, the fabric she wore, even the patterns on her clothes. Again, more unsolicited advice that this other reporter had been discussing on the talk show I watched but just more unsolicited advice regarding your appearance, which I'm sure no one wants. Again, here's a clip showing when he reveals on air about his wardrobe choice. An Australian TV anchor is getting attention this morning for making a fashion statement that no one noticed. Over the weekend, the internet went just a little bit crazy mm. Mm. over the fact that it was revealed that Carl has been wearing exactly the same suit mm every single day on this show, mm. at this desk, in that chair, uh, for one whole year. Now, the reason that this all started, this was a show of support um, for me. After I, um... Anchor Carl Stefanovic wore the same blue suit every day. In that time, not one viewer said a thing. He says it was a show of solidarity with his co-anchor, who is judged more harshly for what she wears. Gail, you're never judged for what you wear, are you? Yeah, we're judged all the time. We are. All the time. But the I time. would notice if you wear the same suit every day. <laughs> and I think I would make a comment. And you certainly don't wear the same tie. No, no. He, don't wear he the said same. he had it cleaned a couple of times. So. I think that's a really interesting thing. I, I do, I'm too. I'm glad that he did that, sticking up too. for her. Yeah. It's interesting nobody noticed. That's interesting, yeah. too. At the end there, as the CBS reporters noted, no one noticed when a man wears the same suit all the time. Yet his co-anchor was always being put down by strangers via email for her wardrobe choices. And I think by criticizing the appearance of women on TV and normalizing it in your households, in your Facebook group, this normalization perpetuates itself into society at large and invites open criticism of the appearances of all women, and that's not okay. And I'm going to leave you with that. Bye.